The Spanish artist Francisco José de Goya y Lucientes was commissioned in 1800 to paint the official portrait of the extended royal family of Spain as a group portrait. He was at the time at the peak of his career, being appointed first court painter or primero pintor de cámara by King Charles IV of Spain just two years prior. The process of painting this life-size composition was a very rigorous one, with many sketches and individual portraits in preparation that were all supervised and approved by the king and queen. Goya had done a great number of other individual portraits of the king and queen and other members of the royal family and many public figures from social life or politics. Goya's status at the time was the highest possible for a Spanish artist. And yet, after painting this now infamous painting, he was not requested to paint another portrait of the royal family. The reason for this was the sarcasm with which the official portrait has been received in the following period after its revealing. Up until this era, the tradition of royal portraiture was very much in favor of artists that masked imperfections and showcased the monarch in an undisputable position of power. In short, flattery, idealization, and symbolism. Goya, as the first, decided to actually paint what he saw. And what did he see? According to historians today, political commentators of the era, and people of Spain of that time, the artist's brush rendered the image of a highly dysfunctional family, a king that was betrayed as a husband by his wife, who was carrying on with the prime minister, among others, high probability of illegitimate royal children, a son that was planning to exile his father and clear the way for himself to be king, people with vices, shortcomings, and overinflated egos in celebratory gowns. King Charles IV was extremely unpopular, mostly due to his disinterest in state affairs, which he left completely to his wife, Queen Maria Luisa, to attend to. And she did so with the Prime Minister Manuel Godoy in more ways than it would have been appropriate. Commentators of the era remarked that their physical appearance, almost caricature-like, was merely a reflection of the vices of their own character being translated onto canvas by the brilliant Goya very faithfully. Much to those who despise the royal family of Spain's delight, French writer Théophile Gautier famously called it a picture of the corner grocer who has just won the lottery. This type of derogatory commentary that was widely spread in the later part of the 19th century was in no way directed at Goya's work that was held in extremely high regard. The viewers simply considered the work to be a hidden satire or caricature that Goya made about the Spanish royals. This can be argued, though, because Goya was leading a pretty good life as first court painter and did not set an intention to jeopardize that status by mocking the supreme power that could have it all taken away and inflict who knows what other punishment. The painter simply depicted the harsh reality of a sovereign inept at his duty and who even seemed utterly disinterested in his job in a time of turmoil in Europe and with a Napoleonic threat too close to Spain to be ignored. After all, it was only a few years before this painting was made that the French Revolution brutally cut down their Bourbon French relatives King Louis XVI and Queen Marie Antoinette to replace them with Napoleon Bonaparte who is now seeking further expansion. But Charles IV, unlike his father before him, King Charles III, completely lacked the wisdom and interest to steer his country in more peaceful and stable directions. Aside from that, Francisco Goya had suffered a loss of hearing because of an illness from years ago, and this dimmed his overall view of the world and generally perceived society and the future with pessimism. 
this could be another explanation for his unwillingness to employ flattery and to add glory or dignity to where they did not exist this pessimistic and at times paranoid perception of the present and also the future of humankind will reach its peak with the goya series of black paintings returning to our subject the artist made this huge canvas by assembling individual portraits he made of each member and decided to place a group in his studio aligning them according to their importance in the royal lineage he also added his own image just as another great court painter diego velasquez did earlier in 1656 with las meninas thus maintaining the tradition of recording the painter at work in his studio in the actual process of painting the portraits alongside his sitters let's see who the sitters for this painting are king charles the fourth of bourbon king of spain the main character in the painting goya has done a number of other portraits of king charles the fourth and we can certainly see a resemblance there he was king of spain from 1788 until 1808 when he was forced to abdicate in favor of his son king ferdinand the seventh due to him being highly unpopular with the people but also the nobility of spain queen maria luisa of parma this is the king's wife descendant of the house of parma the youngest daughter of the duke of parma and granddaughter of king philip v of spain the future ferdinand the seventh king's first son who reigned from march to may eighteen o eight being deposed by napoleon bonaparte who installed his brother joseph bonaparte as king joseph the first on the throne of spain ferdinand the seventh resumed his reign from eighteen thirteen to his death in eighteen thirty three don carlos maria isidro benito de borbon king's second son whom like all royal children was given the title infante of spain he was best known for trying to obtain the succession to the throne after his brother ferdinand's passing but lost the battle as isabella his niece was crowned queen of spain in eighteen thirty three as isabella the second don antonio pascual this was the king's brother and we can see some resemblance there next we can see carlota joaquina with only a part of her head visible this is the king's eldest daughter and queen of portugal and brazil by marriage to king john the sixth of portugal maria isabel another one of the king's daughters and future queen of the two sicilies by marriage to francis i of the two sicilies in eighteen o two she was rumored to be the illegitimate daughter of the prime minister manuel godoy not actually a royal child francisco de paula this was the king's youngest son infante of spain later the uncle and father-in-law to his niece future queen isabella the second of spain and next we can see maria josefa this was the king's sister who lived all her life at court first at the court of her father king charles the third and then at the court of her brother king charles the fourth and never married maria luisa the king's daughter a spanish infanta who married the prince of parma the couple later becoming king and queen consort of etruria an italian historical province we continue with don luis de parma the king's son-in-law by marriage to infanta maria luisa and king luis the first of etruria and this is their baby carlos luis who was born at his grandfather king charles the fourth's court in madrid and who at only four years of age succeeded his father as king louis the second of etruria after napoleon dissolved the kingdom of etruria charles later inherited his father's title of duke of parma maria antonia of naples the reason why her face is concealed is because at the time of the painting was being made she was promised to charles the fourth's oldest son ferdinand to become the future queen of spain but they were not married yet and by not being an official member of the royal family she could not fully be present in this group portrait her presence with her face turned away from the viewer was more like an announcement of her possible future role in the bourbon house of spain and the final character of the painting francisco goya 
the artist himself. He decided to continue the tradition of Velázquez and maybe even pay tribute to his masterwork Las Meninas and include himself discreetly in the background, studying and painting the members of the royal family in his studio. This portrait of the family of King Charles IV was painted both at the royal residence in Aranjuez and the painter's studio in Madrid, starting with the summer of 1800 and finishing it one year later. In Madrid, Goya assembled the individual portraits he had previously done as studies of all the protagonists and placed them according to their status. The contemplative, relaxed atmosphere of the painting, immersed in a golden afternoon light, hints to romanticism, which was the favorite style of the era, but the brutal honesty with which Goya immortalized his characters is a realism ahead of its time. Words are insufficient to describe the mastery of the artist when painting the different textures and reflections of the fabrics, the silks and laces, the jewelry and ornaments. This is probably why there were no objections from the royal family at the periodic showing of preparatory sketches and studies. They were smitten with Goya's talent and with their own status that was being showcased with such mastery. As for the intention of the portrait to be a critique of the royal family by Goya, it is highly improbable that any successful royal portraitist would set out to bite the hand that fed them, so to speak. But it is, however, in the nature of a great master to see the truth in all things and all people, to see and depict them for what they are, deeply flawed and deeply human. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you have something to ask or to add about Francisco Goya's portrait, King Charles IV and his family, please write below in the comment section. As always, thank you for watching, and if you wish to support this channel, subscribe and join me next time as we unravel another layer in art.